okay so uh, actually matlab was uh, uh, more popular before python and other things became popular matlab was actually the in fact the platform which was used for image processing there are many other platforms in java and other things but uh, the by by and large the popular choice was matlab and the matlab basically stands for matrix laboratory it is it is the the fundamental data type in matlab is a matrix so because images we are will be representing mostly by matrix so it is very well suited for that so there are many mathematical operations on matrix like linear algebra where you have to calculate like let us say inverse of a matrix or eigen vector or eigen values of a matrix or whatever so if you if you start using java or any pro simple programming language you have to basically either implement those functions on your own or even if you use libraries they are not so convenient to use but we'll see matlab uh, basically is very useful first of all it has many powerful toolboxes not only for image processing for any mathematical or related uh, any mathematical related uh, fields like machine learning or uh, statistics or anything even signal processing is another kind of things in electric in electron electrical and electronic engineering they also quite frequently use matlab because there are many powerful toolboxes for that and uh, the another thing that is actually useful here is that it's a simple interactive environment you can quickly uh, implement your prototype in just few lines of code so you can test your idea and uh, you can debug it very easily and it has various other utilities like uh, uh, it has good plotting and visualization tools so all this makes it very handy so that uh, you can actually implement a complex logic with simple few lines and you can see the output you can debug it you can inspect the values and so on and it also has good help and documentation although it is costly for institute institute purpose but uh, you you get you can get trial versions for few months and a student version is also very cheap in case if anybody is interested uh, so I'll just I have opened the MATLAB environment so you can actually see. So it has uh, it has a command window. I'll just clear it all. So it has a uh, command window where you can instantaneously write, uh, write any command or initialize any data, create any matrix. You can create a matrix just like that. So you can see a variable A has come. You can inspect its value by double clicking on it and so on. There is an editor window where you can where you can write your uh, program. You can create your functions which can be called and so on. And there, there are toolboxes. Uh, different toolboxes are there. There are plotting functionalities. You can convert a, when your program is ready. When uh, for deploying purpose, you can actually uh, compile it into a C executable code. So the, there is a MATLAB compiler which can convert your code to equivalent C code or Java code and so on. So there are many other things which we will see later on. There is a help. Is a very good help, uh, which basically helps. Hmm? Ah, command window you can use help. Just whatever you have to uh, looking for, uh, you can just type. But there's a there's a browser based help which actually allows you to. So, for example, if you want to search about image processing toolbox. So let us say display image from an array. So it opens a browser basically where you can, which explains different things and all that. And you can actually browse it through the content. So I'll leave that exercise later on to you to basically go through that. Normally the file, if you're writing a command, if you're writing a program file, it will get saved as .m file. The control flow and all, all other things are almost similar to C. Only difference is 
uh, semicolon also it's optional you want to put if you put semicolon it suppresses the printing if you uh, if you don't put the semicolon it will whatever it output it is returning it will show in the command window the there are slight differences you don't have to declare explicitly so it's not a strictly typed language you don't have to declare the data type by default uh, it it uh, basically uses a double as a data type for any uh, variable there are no pointers and other things so uh, these things i have already shown everything is a very is a mat is treated as a matrix even a single variable is treated as one cross one matrix you can initialize any matrix just by typing and initializing a value like this normally the indexes indices in matrix in the matlab starts from 1 rather than 0 so the first index will start from 1 uh, so in this case if you want to access this value the index that you have to give it as 1 comma 2 so it's first row and second column so it's row comma column uh, things and it also uh, basically allows you to do vectorization or uh, using colon basically a colon operator is a very handy operator so if you want to access an entire row or a sub row or a sub column or a sub section of the matrix you can basically use this uh, colon to get that range so So, for example, if you want to generate values from one to ten, you can just write one colon ten. It will fill up the, all the values. If you want to access uh, from the first row, uh, column two, three, and four, then you can write two colon four. It will retrieve all the values in uh, in the first row and the column second, third, and fourth, and so on. If you don't specify anything, if you just specify colon, it will uh, retrieve all that elements in that. column so it will retrieve all the elements of row 3 so in this case for example uh if you write a 1 comma so the first row it has retrieved the first row completely uh while writing code you just uh, don't write it conventionally like you write in a c programming language you are using looping so for example if you have to add to matrix you don't have to run a nested loop to add and do all that because the it is optimized for matrix operations so if you use loops sometimes it uh, slows the execution because it's an interpreted language kind of thing flat so it's, but if you write a vectorized code so even if you have to add two two matrices you can just write a plus b or if you have to add uh one column of the matrix and the second column of the matrix b you can just use this vectorized notation to do that i'll should i show you maybe let us say a is this and b is so simply addition of the matrix if you give you will get this thing if you want to uh, only operate selective things again you can use this colon indexing so for example if you want to um, let us say only add instead of if you want to only add the first first row you can actually use those uh, that kind of thing so this is a simple thing even you can do vectorization for a general programming purpose also for example i have a, i have a code written here so for example here i am just trying to generate a sign function uh by changing the theta uh, the theta or the t in radians incrementing from 0 to 10 by a difference of 0.01 and plotting it uh so
so it's just plotted some function depending from values but you can write the same thing equivalent thing in a vectorized way you don't have to run a loop for that just change the value of t from 0 to 10 with the with the appropriate increment and just write y is equal to sine t you will automatically generate the same result what is you have to do here so in even for a general purpose thing you don't have to actually use loops you can avoid loop just by doing simple uh, you can initialize special matrices using functions like you can specify and the size of the dimension of the matrix it will uh, using this function zeros it will create a matrix with values initialized as zeros you want to initialize with one if you want to initialize the diagonal elements as one and all others as zero you can use this or if you want to initialize a random you want to generate random values in the matrix you can use random functions and there are n number of utility functions similarly mathematical functions especially functions related to matrix in linear algebra like eigenvalues if you want to calculate eigenvalues or inverse of a matrix and all those things they are actually very easily done those things become useful later on we'll see because many times we have to op do matrix operations i was already told that that by default the data type is double unless you specify if you want to specify a different data type you can use different data type and you can just use type casting the way we do in c language and similarly all operators like plus minus arithmetic operators they are defined on matrices so if you do a star b it will actually do a matrix multiplication if you want to do a element by element multiplication then you can use dot star so you can proceed that operation with a dot then it will do a scalar arithmetic rather than the vector arithmetic so and you can use logical operators the symbols may differ a little bit another useful uh, function is like uh, you can use a find function and specify a condition on a matrix so it will return all the indexes of uh, element of the matrix a whose element satisfy that condition so for example here if i say find on c values where c is greater than let us say 5 or 10 let us say so this last the last column only values are greater than 3 so it has written indexes so greater than 10 1 2 so i think the indexes is taking 1 2 3 4 5 6 if you want to do instead of that if you want to get the row and column values you can take the you can get the row and column values then it will specify the row and the index the column values also starting class welcome to the image processing toolbox most frequently um, we will use images we'll have to read an image or write an image or display an image so there are functions meant for that i am read i am show i am write these are functions for doing read write and display operations um, Normally, as I said, when an image is read, it is read as unsigned int integer. So from using 8 bits, 
using eight by uh, one byte eight bits. So it will range from zero to two five five. If the range is not from zero to two five five, then the image may not. You can adjust the range by supplying this argument in the I am show function. So I will show that. So I am. I have used I am read a function and inbuilt. Uh, there are some inbuilt uh, images in the MATLAB environment just for testing purpose. So I am trying to read that one of those images, and I am doing I am show what are that image I have read, and I have displayed the size of that image and the the data type of that variable. So the size is 291 cross 240. you can see that image will have come here also and the values are unsigned in from 0 to 255 okay so uh, i have shown i am show normal without scaling it and then another uh, i have display the same image by supplying this uh, telling i am show to adjust the display in case the images are so you can see this image the original image was this its contrast somehow is not so good uh, probably it's not using the full range so when i specified this uh, the other argument it has adjusted the scale so as to use the full range from 0 to 255 so contrast looks little better here If you want to inspect what are the values in this within this uh, image at different locations, there is a simple tool you can write I am pixel info. So if you do that, then you can see a little tag will come here, which will basically tell you. So wherever you move the cursor, it will basically specify its uh, x comma y value. And the intensity, so sorry. So the in the brackets, the the location. I think it's x comma y. So you can see the horizontal is uh, is x. The first index is x. The second index is y. It is increasing, and the intensity values is outside. So here the intensity values is cross. Closer towards 200, and here the intensity value is closer towards zero, where it where it is dark. There is an alternative functions for display like I am tool, which will have all those things or in built into it. So if you display the image using I am tool, then this things is all. It also tests the display range. So see here, it all it is telling you that the minimum intensity value of this image is seventy four, and the maximum intensity value in this image is two to four, and that's why it has adjusted automatically. Now I think I have also specified the adjustment here, and it has some other things like you can pull out this uh, inspector win thing. So wherever you drag this, it will show you the intensity values in that region. So you can see here if you drag this here it's all black if you move towards a whiter region you can see the intensity values increasing so it is in a within a local within a local neighborhood you can if you want to see the intensity values you can use this and uh, this tool for that purpose suppose you have to draw a line so there are other also image scale and all that suppose you have to draw a line on an image you can use a function uh, line and specify the x and y coordinate the beginning and the end coordinate you can specify the color whether white or red whatever so here i am trying to draw a line from some i specify some values here so i should have drawn a line somewhere Yes. So I have specified red color here. So given this value from here to here. 
so it has drawn a line from there so uh, let us say i want to crop this face region i want to crop this uh, face portion so how can i do that so my original image is in a matrix img so i can uh, select the rows and column range which i will have this uh, face region so i am doing that here only so if you see uh, these are the x coordinates and these are the y coordinates i have selected the row and column values accordingly from here so starting from col row 20 to 140 so you can see i think this one is row 20 and then it goes to row around row 140 similarly the Uh, the column values goes from around 65 to 180 so i have basically uh, you selected that range here and uh, save that in, that in another variable named cropped and i'll show this uh, image so you can see now the crop portion of the uh, person's uh, child's face is now being showed here so there is slight sometimes there is slight confusion here uh, x and y the convention in x and y slightly so the x axis is the horizontal one and y is the vertical one so by convention x goes in this direction y goes in this direction okay but when you are access when you when you are uh, supplying the indices of of a matrix generally the convention is row comma column so row is your x no no row is yeah row is y and uh, column will be your x so that means you are axing y comma x rather than x comma y so sometimes that uh, confusion may happen and the index will start from 1 comma 1 you can create a synthetic image will so let us have some other things so if you are, if you are reading a color image so this is a color image probably i am using i am red i and then i am trying to so it will if if you read this for example so color image you can see it has it's a, it's has a third dimension and in the third dimension there will be three three channels rgb so the, the value is 3 so by default when an image is read it is read as unsigned int 8 as i told you so we can extract the three channels rgb separately by specifying the the third dimension is 1 2 or 3 first one will be red second one will be green and third one will be blue and i'll just plot this so you can see this so there is a subplot function which help us you to so there is a subplot function where you can put multiple figures in the same window same figure window so you can specify how many rows and how many columns so 2 by 2 subplot and then provide the location so first location second location third location fourth location so the first location i am printing the original color image in the second location i am printing the red in the third one i am printing the green and the last one i am printing the blue so you can see in the red one so wherever the the red section the values are higher are towards white whereas in the green channel the portion in the green will have a higher value and others will be have a lower value similarly in the blue channel the blue, the blue portion has uh, values towards the higher side and the other portion has other may not have similar values 
Similarly, you can create a synthetic image. You can initialize any any matrix using those initialization functions like zeros of any size here, and can give some value to different locations. So I'm just running a loop here, and each location I'm specifying a value c minus one, so the previous column value. So if I if I show this image. So it's a scalar RAM function because I'm initializing. Uh, so in the in beginning, column value zero. Towards the end, it will have higher side. So it's a simple RAM function kind of thing. So I've created sim simple uh, a synthetic image with intensities going from one from black to white, from column zero to column last column. So by default, the well the range is double. The data type. When you when you are in, when you are reading a uh, image, it it reads as unsigned int, or but when you are creating or something, it will be normally a floating value, a double value. So then you have to be sure it it basically what it does is we'll talk about that later on. It basically treats a double value between range zero and one. So I am sure I am sure for that you have to adjust the display. Because I am sure treats assumes that the image will be in as unsigned int. So and also you can perform. So once you read an image as a matrix, you can do some simple operations like addition, subtraction, multiply. Uh, but you just have to be a little bit careful because sometimes when you do operations like add or multiply, uh, it may the resultant may exceed the range. So your upper range is let us say two five five, and if you add two images, it may go beyond the Higher range, so you have to either deal with that specifically, or solution is you first convert before doing any arithmetic operation. You convert the data type explicitly. You can convert using uh, using simple type casting, or there are functions I am to double, which specifically uh, basically which also scales it appropriately. So if you just use double, it just takes those values straight away as the floating point value. If you do I am to double, it will it will uh, basically do the scaling also. So this I have already showed. When you are using a double image, you have to basically adjust with this. So there are, there are many image conversion functions, utility functions. For example, if you want to convert color into gray, you can call this function RGB to gray. Similarly, if you want to make convert into binary image or a floating point image, so there are functions to to do that, and they may be useful depending on the operations that you want to do. So we'll show them when we do some operations. When you want to open a separate window, if you if you do you have you should uh, uh, as you had seen, I have used figure comma I am show. So if I don't do figure comma I am show, then it will it will re uh, It will erase the old figure, old image, and on the same window it will display the new image. If you want to display into a separate window, you just write figure comma, then then it will open a separate window. So if you are okay with this, then let us do some simple exercises. So remember, in the last class we discuss about spatial resolution and intensity resolution. So let us try to do some exercise related to that. So for the first exercise that I want you to uh, tell me is that let us say if you want to load a grayscale image by default, it will have a range from zero to two two five five. It will have two fifty six gray levels. Let us say we want to reduce the intensity resolution. Instead of two fifty six gray level, I want to just use sixteen gray levels. So let us say I just want to reduce the storage requirement. So I just want to reduce from two fifty six to only sixteen gray levels. How will you do that? So we'll you will first. Hmm? So what will be that arithmetic operation? Divided by sixteen. So let uh, so. 
so let me explain for others uh, so let us say 256 so initially you have let us say values from 0 1 2 3 and so on so let us say instead of uh, instead of 256 you just want to reduce to 128 so you just want to half the number of levels so if you divide by 2 if you divide by 2 what will happen and take the round of take the let us say the floor value or the seal value so if you divide by 2 0 will become 0 and 1 will also become similarly 2 will become 1 and 3 will also become so both will get mapped to level 1 similarly 4 and 5 will get mapped to level and so on okay so similarly if, if you want to reduce it to only 16 k levels you will divide by any other solution you can also do a bitwise and you can do a logical and so if you if you want to so you, so four levels you, you can just zero out the last four significant bits and uh, you will have the so let me see if i have i'll just so this is i am just uh, loop runner uh, this program i'm just looping over and changing to the number of bits requirement so this one is the original image with eight bits and you can see the as we reduce the number of bits uh, the density resolution has been reduced of course if you if you just divide it by uh, if you just divide it by uh, this thing uh, see because i have this, uh, the actual you will have to resize re, you have to again multiply it to if you want to store it as an image proper image you have to re, multiply back by the by 256 otherwise what will happen is that or the level gap otherwise uh, the values will only be between from 0 to 16 or whatever and when you have to so if you display it it will all look all black because 0 to 16 will probably it will be interpreted as by a, by any image viewer it will be interpreted as black so again you have to rescale it so what so this image i have actually um, if i don't do this you will see the difference here if i don't do this probably you can see the difference you are seeing all all black image So in the actual in the actual code, what I am doing here, I am first of all uh, because I am going to do an arithmetic operation, I am going to convert it into a double, then divide it by the level gap, take the seal seal value, and then so rounding off and after rounding off, multiply it again by level gap. So it will again go back to the it will at least use the full range, but it will skip intermediate range if you use the full range and then then the image will uh, I think I will have the image you yeah, don't have time here so the images I have so I used I am right function here I am right function basically tells the image uh, variable from where you will take the data and the name of the data name of the image that you want to specify and you can specify the type of the so image image type also there are different uh, data uh, there's different image types J, bmp jpg jpg png and so on so you can specify that here and you can see this has written actually different png files Okay, so this was I think easy. What about the second exercise? So let us say you want to reduce the spatial resolution by a factor of two in each dimension. What will we do? 
instead of intensity resolution, let us say just want to reduce the spatial resolution by a factor of two in each dimension. Uh, so it will get reduced by one by four. It will become one by four. So one session is saying take read two values and take an average of that value. Huh? Neighborhood average. Okay. So yeah. So when you're reducing it, actually you don't have to go for averaging. When you have to increase it, then you have to do an interpolation. So we'll talk about that later on. So when you have to reduce it, you can just drop alternate rows and alternate columns. You can just sample. If you want to be more accurate, you can take an average. Okay. So it's So this, this is the one image. I have read that image, find, found out its uh, dimension, rows and columns. And I'm skipping every alternate row and every alternate column here. So I'm incrementing the row by two, incrementing the column by two. And taking, so this is the new image. So original image was of size 256 by 256. The original image of size 256. So the reduced reduce image has now only 128 and 128. And you can see the effect of reducing the spatial resolution. You can use the inbuilt function. There, is, there are inbuilt functions to do that. I am resize. You specify the dimension, the factor along each direction. Suppose you want to reduce by half on e along each factor, then specify 0.5. If you want to have a different factor along different direction, then you have to provide two different parameters. Uh, let us say one, one by two on one direction and one by four in the other direction. Or if you want to increase it, you have to, you can use a factor of two or four and so on. We'll talk about that when you have to re increase it, there is a problem that we'll have to encounter. We have to do go for some interpolation. We'll talk that in the next class, but image resize does that automatically for you. So this is the doubled so size has increased to 5, 5, 12. This one was the reduced one. So this is just using the inbuilt function. Okay. So you can also do simple operations, arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction and so on. They can have they can have different application also. One of the useful application of doing image addition is doing some kind of noise reduction. So we'll see that. Uh, so for example, here this is an image. As you can see, these are corrupted. These images are have some noise, random noise here. So generally, uh, if you want to improve. So, so let us say your, your function, uh, this is a noise, this is corrupted by noise. So let us say there is some random noise factor added to this. Okay. So if, so what it is saying is that if you keep on adding, if you keep on taking this, uh, so let us say this is your noisy image. So this is, let us say, this is your uncorrupted noise image, and this is your noise portion of that, and this is your corrupted image with noise. So if you take several of these corrupted images for, for, the, for the same view, a different time instant, and then do a simple averaging, simple do a, just basically sum up different. Images. Let us take take case of k such images and add it and then divide by k so simple averaging so this is what is being shown here so this image as you keep on doing this what will happen because this noise component is going to be a random variable which will have some random things um, so it will get cancelled out when you 
you go on increasing the when if, if k is sufficiently large if you k is sufficient when k tends to very large value what will happen the variance the variance which is due to this noise will get reduced because when you are doing an averaging operation here the the resultant the the resultant image what i can say this is ali so the variance of this image and the variance of uh, it will basically be proportional to we'll talk about uh, so later on little about little bit about probabilities probability and statistics but basically because this is going to be a random process uh and this this signal is going to be the same for each time instant so if you if you if you average it over sufficiently large number of frames the contribution due to this noise will get uh, minimized and ma your majority image uh the the signal portion of the image will actually be dominant and this is what being shown here that probably this is after taking 100 noisy images and averaging this is the image which where the noise has seems to be reduced quite quite a bit i'll show that in uh, using a code also here so before doing the averaging i'm just also showing some simple arithmetic on on using images so here i'm reading an image i'm just adding some constant factor let us say 50 values to each element and here i'm subtracting it and i'm just doing a multiply by some factor let us say 1 by 3 1 by 1.5 so what do you expect so this is the original image i the first image uh, image of a moon kind in the second image i have added i have scaled up the value uh, not scaled up i have just added added up a constant value of 50 to each each location so you can see the resultant brightness all image all intensity values have been gone shifted towards the brighter side in the other i have subtracted the similar amount so they have gone towards the darker side and this one is kind of a where i have done a scaling i have done a scalar multiplication by factor 1.5 so everything so here the increase is more drastic here because it's a multiplication factor so this is the addition simple addition subtraction and multiplication but it's a all scalar multiplication scalar arithmetic because it it would be very close to zero so even if you increase uh if you multiply it even by 1.5 or if any increase by 50 it has been shifted towards a uh, little towards that size and also because it is uh, the display is getting adjusted towards the the actual range in the image so whatever is that range it is trying to it is basically adjusting the display also the i am show function is doing the display uh, adjustment also it will clip so it will clip to the to, to the display so that is what you have to be careful if while doing a image arithmetic either you have to convert it to double and then do arithmetic otherwise you will have to take care of that so that is what i'm going to show here so let us say i i add two images take two images one is coin.png another is cameraman so i'll first resize it one of the image to the other size so that they can be done simple addition can be done two matrices can be added so i am now adding those two image matrices i am going to plot it so let me let me draw So these are the original images. This one is coin image. That is camera. I mean, they don't have the same size. So I'm, I'm basically doing a resize operation. 
and if I add the two image, so what is happened? What has happened here? Actually, let me let me delete this. So this is the original image and let us say I have simple, if I simply add to and display it, what is happening here? Uh, they have been added, but do you, do you, do you expect that this, uh, by adding these two images, will this should be the actual image? There is something happening here, na? what is that? The clipping is happening. So when wherever it is exceeding 255 it is getting clipped to pure white so that is what is happening here you can see here so on on, on this location where the cameraman is almost dark you can see the coin at least because the addition will be probably still in the range of 255 but wherever the cameraman image also was was towards bright towards a mid gray value and the image coin was also it has exceeded to five five. It has got clipped. So if you want to, if you want to address this, what you can do? Can we first half both of them and then add? Will that give you the better result? Let us see. Yeah. So it's better result probably now because we have so that now you have ensured that at least the values will not go beyond 255 or the range whatever is the range uh, other thing you could have done you can you could if you don't want to do to that you can have just converted it to double and then simply done the addition so that would have taken care of uh, you can see the with the double addition there is no problem uh, with the clipping thing. Okay. I'll just show this uh, noisy image also. So here I'm trying to read an image. I'm adding a, a Gaussian noise. We'll talk about Gaussian noise later on of zero mean and variance of 0 0.02 to that and I'm creating a noisy image. And what I am doing, I am doing an averaging here. So I am going to add these noisy images to an average image. And later on show this average image by dividing it by the number of samples that I have added. And I am going to plot it. Let me run this. So this was the original image with no noise or almost zero noise. And these are this this is just one image with that uh, uh, Gaussian noise added with zero mean and 0 0.02 variance. And if we take two images and do take an average, we get this image. If we take eight images such, and there's 32 images. And all these 32 images were were added with that random Gaussian noise, which which would be something like this. But after take adding all 32 and then taking averages, the effect of noise has been minimized has been reduced so is is that, is that understandable why the noise will be reduced or no because the because the the image is same the underlying Im signal strength is same for at least location and uh, when you are adding a random gaussian noise the noise value will will be fluctuating it will be zero or it, so normally when it is centered around zero means so it will have some negative value also some negative some positive around that as a Gaussian noise now is a random uh, normal distribution so when you add multiple such images so the signal strength is going to stay fixed but the random values are going to somehow when you do an addition and averaging out they will tend to cancel it out so that that's why we are seeing that resultant effect is having getting reduced noise <laughs>
So we'll continue from this later on. We'll discuss more about 